Never lose your childish innocence. It's the most important thing. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah from Everyday Starlet. Welcome to my channel. I make videos to inspire you to be the star of your own life. I'm continuing my Masculine Feminine Energies film breakdown series with one of my favorite films, Under the Tuscan Sun. If you're not familiar with what I mean by Masculine and Feminine Energies, I have a lot of videos talking about this topic, but a brief summary, Masculine and Feminine Energies are energies that live within all of us. We all contain both energies, but we have a core energy that's the one we're most ourselves in, and it very often links up with our gender. It doesn't have to, but it often does. We can be in wounded or healed versions of either of these energies. And in order to have sexual polarity in a relationship, you need one partner to be embodying the masculine energy and one partner to be embodying the feminine energy. Because same energies repel sexually and opposite energies attract sexually. So before I get into this film, YouTube has been a little weird about whether or not I can include film clips in my videos. Sometimes it lets me, sometimes it doesn't. It blocks the whole video. So I'm going to try to include some film clips for example so you can see the film breakdowns. But if it turns out that I can't include film clips in this video, I always put little mini breakdowns of some of the scenes from these films on my TikTok. You can check that out. Link will be in the description box below. So Under the Tuscan Sun happens to be one of my favorite films. And honestly, it's gotten me through some pretty rough breakups. It's kind of my go-to breakup movie uh, or when I'm going through something or feeling like I don't know, I, I just am going through a different phase in my life or something like that. Like this is kind of one of my go-to films. And I'm gonna say something that might be controversial. I'm gonna go on a limb and some of you may disagree with me on this, but I'm just gonna say it. I believe that Under the Tuscan Sun is a better movie than Eat, Pray, Love. I know, shocker. I'll do a breakdown of Eat, Pray, Love if you guys are interested in that. I, I've, I've, it's not my favorite, but I'd be more than happy to do a breakdown of it. But for me, as far as like, post-divorce women trying to find herself through travel and new experiences and adventures. Under the Tuscan Sun wins it for me every time. I know I've not read the book, I've only seen the film. And I didn't really even realize it until re-watching this film to do this breakdown, is this is such a feminine film. It's so much, there's so much divine feminine energy in this film. It's, it's almost overwhelming and I don't even know if I'll be able to touch on the whole thing because there's just so much in this film. Under the Tuscan Sun focuses on Frances, who's played by Diane Lane. And Frances is such a feminine character, and I just love the way that she's represented in this film. The opening scene of this film, Frances is obviously a, a writer, and she's also a college professor, and one of her former students is actually launching a book, and she's there for his book party. And he gives this wonderful speech, and it's funny how you can tell he has this bit of flirtation with her even though he's you know was her student and is a much younger man because she's just got this magnetic feminine energy. Frances in this opening scene is just such the embodiment of like feminine flow. She's just moves through life. She has this effortlessness about her. She has this kind, warm openness about her. Uh, you know, she's congratulating her student and and she's got, she's got a warm mothering energy, but she also has a lot of sensuality with just the way she moves. She's offering people brownies and she's, you know, talking about cooking and writing and, and she's just, she's such in feminine flow. Then she finds out <laughs> that her husband has been having an affair. And we actually don't see their relationship at all. We don't actually even meet him at all in this film. However, the way it's implied is he basically ran off and decided to have an affair with another woman. I believe it was alluded to that he was like playing out his boyhood fantasies. And you also find out that Frances was, was working and she was teaching and things like that to support her husband while he was writing and having this affair. And you also find out that this affair is with a much younger woman who ends up pregnant, but she obviously has money because they end up deciding to buy the house that Frances and her husband were living in. So Frances gets a pretty good settlement in her divorce. Now again, because we don't learn anything about the husband and we don't see him, it appears what is going on here is that Frances is obviously a very feminine woman. She was working, but she obviously was working doing things that kept her in feminine flow. Um, you know, she was, she was teaching about something that she loved and nurturing her students, which is very much feminine energy. She was writing herself and she was doing book reviews and things like that, keeping her hand in her creative outlets while she was earning money. But she was earning the money to support their relationship while her husband was in his creative energy. Very often, that creative energy is coming from feminine energy. Now, that does not mean that men can't be creatives. But if, as a man, you then step back and you lean on your feminine partner to be the provider so that you can then 
be in your creative energy all the time, very often what happens is that's going to shift the polarity because now you've kind of got two feminine partners really in this relationship and that's going to repel sexually in the same way that when you have two masculine partners in a relationship, that's going to repel sexually. And you're not necessarily going to have a solid sexual relationship if you have two partners that are in the same energy. And it appears very much like Francis's husband was sinking a lot into his own feminine energy, which meant that he was starting to just seek out pleasure and just seek out uh, enjoyment in life. And he wasn't actually stepping up and embodying his masculine energy, which again, just the way it sounds and the way it's implied in the film, you get the impression that he went and found a younger woman, which is probably satisfying his ego needs. Maybe she's younger, so she's not quite as strong a woman as Francis is. Francis is not strong in an aggressive way. Francis is very soft and feminine, but she obviously has a lot of wisdom and maturity. And a man who hasn't necessarily stepped into his own masculine energy is going to find that intimidating. So he's in his feminine energy. And again, this younger woman who probably appeases his ego, and we're just speculating this because we don't really know, if she has a lot of money so that she was able to actually buy their house, buy this apparently very expensive house. It's implied that maybe she's working and that maybe he's found this other woman who makes even more money and is even more successful. And she may be in her masculine energy. That may be more appealing to him in the long run because having this amazing feminine partner that he had in his wife, it wasn't working for him because he wasn't stepping into his masculine. I'm speculating just based on the information that we're given in the film, but it does appear like that's the case. And because there's a lot of stuff about youth and aging and stuff like that, I'm actually going to do a whole video just on women and aging and why I think there's a misconception that many people think younger women are just more feminine than older women and that's not the case all the time. So I'm going to do a whole video just about that topic because I have a lot to say on that issue. <laughs> so Frances becomes devastated, obviously, and you know, she, it's amazing the shift there kind of is this darkness that kind of comes over her. She doesn't necessarily go into her masculine, but she shuts down. That feminine flow of hers that she's had in the beginning kind of shuts down. She's more closed off. She has a, a more of a hardness to her, to her appearance, her face. She's not as in flow, which is understandable considering what she's been through, but it has kind of diminished her life force energy. And I do want to make a slight side note because I do get some people that request that I talk about these energies in, you know, same sex or non heterosexual relationships. And in reality, I don't talk about that as much, even though I do believe that these energies are uh, beyond gender so that these energies, masculine and feminine, exist in alternative relationships outside of the heterosexual relationship. I don't necessarily think that I'm the best person to be focused on relationships that are not heterosexual, being a heterosexual woman myself. That's more my wheelhouse, it's more what my experience is. However, I have had a lot of comments in women who are in same-sex relationships who have told me about how these energies do work in their relationship as well. So if you are in a same-sex relationship or want to be in a same-sex relationship, the advice that I'm using can and just as easily work if you just translate man and woman for two women or two men or anything like that. I do want to touch a little bit because it's not a main part of the story, but you do meet Patty who is Francis's best friend and Patty is in a lesbian relationship and you don't see them together a lot in this film, but when you do, I really do think you get a sense of their energies, of the fact that Patty is clearly the feminine flow in the relationship. She is the one who is valuing connection. She's the one who's connecting with Francis, who's much more open and flowing and, and she's the one who actually finds out that she's pregnant. She wants to carry a child. She is, she's very much in her feminine energy, whereas her partner, we don't don't actually even think that they name in this. I know she's played by Kate Walsh, but she is very much the one who is focused on work. She's late for the dinner because she's been focused on work. She's always checking her, I think it's a beeper because it's a different time when they use beepers. I don't think it was a cell phone, but always like focused on work and less focused on the relationship in particular because work is her main priority. That's much more masculine. So you can tell in that dynamic, you have a a very masculine focused driven woman with a much more feminine flowy woman. And that's how those energies can work in a same sex relationship. And you see it very much actually when Patty announces to Francis that she's pregnant and the connection that Francis and Patty have is just really beautiful because it's, it is two feminine energies. Again, one of them is heterosexual and one of them is in a homosexual relationship, but they are, they're, they're two feminine energies and you get two very feminine flowy energies together 
they can be such a beautiful connection to each other. And you know, you really do see that Francis really softens around finding out that Patty is pregnant and they have this this very beautiful, it's this its this feminine support, it's this divine feminine energy that's just sort of flowing between the two of them, and it really becomes evident in that scene. So because Patty's pregnant, um, Patty and her partner had to cancel a trip they were going to take to romantic Tuscany, and they decide to gift the trip to Frances as a way for her to move on with her life, change things up, and just, you know, help her to get over her divorce. So Frances goes on the tour, and while she's exploring Tuscany, she sees Catherine. Catherine is my favorite character in this film. I love Catherine. I mean, I love Francis in this film, but Catherine is just amazing. I aspire to be Catherine, I was going to say when I'm older, but she's probably not that much older than I am now in this film. Catherine is just so fabulous. And Catherine is the epitome of the lover archetype in feminine energy. I have videos about all the different archetypes, masculine and feminine. Catherine is such the lover archetype. She has this, uh, I mean, she's she's this regal queen, but she's so in touch with her senses. But she's also got this youthful innocence, and she's also got this, this warm mothering energy. She's such a divine feminine goddess, is what I would call her. She's just such the epitome of divine feminine energy. And she kind of almost becomes Francis's fairy godmother for, for lack of a better word um, and Francis is so drawn to her and I do think because we've seen this as examples in some other films that I've broken down is that a woman who's truly embodying her feminine energy can often feel almost like she's not real um, because we don't see true feminine energy in our society as often as you know we should I would say is that sometimes when you see a when you see a woman who's truly embodying her feminine energy it sometimes seems like a mirage. It's like it, it's almost like out of this world. Like it's it's otherworldly, and and I think that that's what Francis kind of sees in Catherine, and she's kind of drawn to follow her, um, kind of through the streets of Tuscany. She loses Catherine at one point, and she ends up connecting with um, one of the guys on that is on the tour with her, and it's really an interesting moment where he tells Francis that he has all these postcards he wants to write, but he just doesn't know how to describe what's going on around him, and she says she'll write it for him because she's a writer and she actually writes we get to see some of Frances's writing and how she talks about the scene that she's witnessing in Tuscany and you really get that sense that Frances is such a sensual being her sensuality is coming out in that moment which kind of almost feels a little bit again like a fairy godmother moment where Catherine has kind of sparked Frances's sensuality a little bit because Frances is is she's still feminine but she's a bit disconnected from her true feminine essence because of what she's been through and that scene where she's writing the postcard is so sensual it's all about sensual energy and just enjoying all of the scenes around her and taking it in with all the senses very feminine energy. So Frances ends up seeing an ad for a house for sale and that's when Catherine runs into her and basically says oh why don't you buy it and you know Francis thinks that that's a ridiculous idea. And then fate keeps stepping in and Francis keeps seeing signs that she should buy this house and she decides to buy the house. Now, following her intuition, even though her logical brain thought that this was a horrible idea, she even says that at one point, whereas her intuition and her soul is telling her that that's where she needs to be. And tapping into that intuition is so much feminine energy. Is you know, even when you're in your head and your ego is telling you all these stories, if you can tap into your body, your body will tell you what the right move is. Even when it starts to feel like, oof, I don't know if this was the right idea, I don't know if this is the right thing. Her intuition was speaking to her. Her intuition was sending her these signs from the universe, letting her know that this was the path that she was meant to be on. And as Frances is renovating her house, she meets so many people along the way. Uh, Catherine, of course, being one of them who I absolutely adore. And Catherine is so, again, this divine feminine fairy godmother. She's tapped into her senses. She eats ice cream because she loves ice cream. She wears hats because she loves hats. She is sort of living in this dream. She's kind of got this, you know, young painter she's fooling around with and he's painting her and, and you know, she's just, 
so much in this feminine flow. She wants to jump in a fountain, she gets drunk and jumps in a fountain. I think she's such a great example of the fact that many people believe that you get rid of your maiden energy at a certain point in your life, and I think she's such a beautiful example of how this maiden, youthful, feminine energy can exist in women throughout their entire life, and I, I absolutely love that about her. This, uh, the, the maiden, childish innocence, her lover sensuality. She's also got the the warmth of the mother where she's you know kind of guiding Francis back into her feminine energy she's got so much amazing divine feminine energy and I really think she acts as sort of this um, you know, goddess, fairy godmother, something to Francis as Francis is going along this journey. Another person that Francis runs into is Senor Martini, and he's actually the realtor who sells Francis the house. And he's he's a married man, a uh, married father, and he he kind of ends up becoming this very grounded masculine structure for Francis, especially in the beginning, like when she's going to meet with contractors. There's just been a storm the night before, and uh, Martini shows up and wants to check on Francis, make sure she's okay after the storm, and also help her talk to the contractors because he knows she doesn't speak much Italian. And he also wants to make sure that the contractors don't take advantage of her. It's that protector energy. He has this real drive to protect. He's got a very, very grounded masculine energy. Um, he has a sensitivity to him, but he also is just very rooted and grounded and he has this very protective energy. At one point, Francis <laughs> sees a snake crawling into her bedroom and she freaks out. Um, and she ends up calling Senor Martini and he comes and checks the house and doesn't find a snake and she ends up basically crying to him because he's, he's a masculine structure he's a safe space and as a feminine sometimes that's all you need in order to release emotions is having a masculine safe space um, and they have this really amazing scene I mean he has some amazing lines in this where he basically talks about um, I love the concept where she talks about you know how she you know she 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 must have known that her marriage was falling apart but you know, it, love makes you so stupid. And he basically says in Italian, love is blind. And she's like, oh yeah, we have that saying too. And he's, well, everybody has that saying because it's true everywhere. You know, love can make you blind. It's a very grounded masculine reassurance. And you know, she also confesses to him that she wants a, a wedding in her house and she wants a baby in her house, but she's bought this house for a life she doesn't even have. And he explains to her about the fact that, you know, they've, they've built train tracks for trains that couldn't even make the trip. Because if you, it's essentially like if you build it, it will come, which is from a different movie. But it's that same thing where it's like, you're setting up your life now for the life that you want. And she's crying and she's, while she's letting go and releasing, she's so beautiful and vulnerable. And he he has a line where he says, um, you know, please don't look so sad. I'm gonna be forced to make love to you and I've never been unfaithful to my wife. Which I think is a really significant moment in there because for one, it shows how unbelievably sexy it is for a masculine man to see a woman when she's vulnerable. For a feminine woman, vulnerability is your greatest strength. And it is so irresistible to a true grounded masculine part. He's obviously not her partner in this situation, but the fact that even though he's obviously very drawn to her because they have this polarity of the masculine and the feminine, but yet he's dedicated to his wife. He's devoted to his wife, and I think that that gives her some reassurance that there are men out there who are going to be faithful husbands. And I think sometimes that's all it takes. You know, I know from my own personal experience of not having great examples of masculine men in my life, sometimes all you need to do is just prove to yourself they are out there. And you know, that's something I've, a journey I've been on and that's a journey I always recommend for women is to start paying attention to the masculine men that are out there. They may not be available, they may not be exactly what you're looking for, but it's noticing when they're out there and it gives you that reassurance and retrains your brain so that you actually do believe that there are men like that out there. So you don't fall into that, all too common <laughs> scenario of saying there's just no good men out there. I've been there, I know, I get it. But sometimes you just need that little bit of reassurance just for yourself. Frances becomes good friends with her neighbors who are this amazing Italian family, which has kind of invited her in as part of their community. And also she ends up picking a contractor who has three Polish laborers who are working for him. And she really does kind of take them on as being a part of her family, especially Howell, I think is how you say his name. I'm not exactly sure how they say it, but um, he's the youngest and he is uh, sort of, you know, an orphan. And uh, he, he speaks the most English. And Francis really takes to him as 
uh, much like a, like a mother's son, like she becomes very mothering to him. She cares about him very deeply and wants to protect him and is there for him and really starts seeing him as, as her family. Which I think is so evident of divine feminine energy is the feminine wants family, they want community, they want connection and she gets very rejuvenated by that. And it's interesting how she, um, you know, talks about how she wants people to cook for. So Martini actually gives her a, uh, a statue of the, the patron, patron saint of chefs. And she realizes she does have people to cook for. It's not the traditional family, um, but she starts cooking and trying out new Italian dishes and, and feeding the contractors who are working on her house and connecting with her neighbors with cooking. And she really gets into cooking, which, you know... I think people get confused when it comes to cooking that, you know, well, cooking is woman's work. Cooking in general, because it, it engages a lot of the senses, it it tends to be very much a flow, especially when you're you're experimenting with foods and, and this idea of creation. All these things are very feminine energy. It's not that it's like a woman's job to cook, so to speak. It's the fact that cooking is such a naturally feminine activity. And the fact that she is 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 cooking and creating these meals and it's actually really a fun scene when she's she's cooking and they don't really have any tables or chairs or anything like that. So like the the men who are doing the, the contracting work all show up and they're like building a makeshift table out of wood and stuff like that. I think that is just so, it's like, it's like the feminine and the masculine. It's like, okay, the feminine is, is in the kitchen and she's cooking and she's in the senses and she's creating these meals and where you have, you have the, the masculine men who are basically like, like building a table so that they can eat on the table. And to me, that's just such an amazing, like, like feminine masculine dynamic that they have. And none of it's romantic. It's literally all just a, a family structure and it's a sort of makeshift family. You know, they're, they're, they're each other's chosen family but they've created this community and it's just such a beautiful example of the masculine and feminine dynamics that can exist you know even outside of just a romantic relationship so francis ends up meeting marcello and marcello is an interesting character he's, he's not overly feminine but he's not overly masculine either I, I honestly i feel like the way he's portrayed in this film he's got a very sort of carefree way about him he does have a very direct way about him, so he does have some masculine energy, uh, but he also tends to be kind of like, eh, well, I don't, who cares if I had something to do today? I'll just spend time with you, and it's just, he's a little bit more in flow, which isn't gonna necessarily work for a feminine woman. But Frances is drawn to him. She's still healing. She's still kind of in her wounding, and they have a little bit of a, a spark going. And it's really interesting in the scene where Marcello is trying to kind of seduce Francis and she shuts down out of fear out of wounding but also I think what's happening is Marcello is very in his sensuality he starts talking about how he could swim in her eyes and she laughs at him because she's nervous like he thinks she's mocking him it's really just that she's nervous about this but also she I mean she's she's such a, a feminine sensual woman a man who is now sitting here and he's embodying his feminine energy by being very sensual it's it's the polarities are off like they're not they're not necessarily going to come together and i think the problem that comes together is, is that she he feels hurt because she shut down and you know she ends up apologizing she does get vulnerable with him she opens her heart to him which i think is amazing but she also essentially is is like you know, I'd like you to sleep with me and whatever. And he kind of makes a joke about it. She's now being more direct and she's taking on a little bit more of the, the masculine energy, not overly masculine. And he's not being overly feminine. They're just not in a real polarity there. So they do get together. They sleep together. They have, they, they obviously want to see each other again, but it just never comes together. You know, all these things come up and Francis really is prioritizing relationships. Her friend Patty ends up coming to see her um, while she's pregnant because you find out that Patty's relationship has fallen apart and Patty comes to Francis to lean on her. And, you know, as Francis being a feminine being, feminine beings are going to drop everything for their loved ones. That's actually one of the main priorities of the feminine. For the masculine, their priority is going to be their passion and purpose. Whereas for the feminine, it's going to be community and connection. It's going to be love. It's going to be relationships. That's always going to be their top priority. So Francis has all of these, uh, you know, 
things that she's doing with the friends that she really feels like are important to her. And her and Marcello never really link up together. So Frances finally decides that she's just going to, she's gonna go to Marcello. She's gonna make it a point and she's gonna go to see him and she gets herself in this real like, feminine flow. She puts on a white dress. She's feeling really floaty. You notice how men are reacting to her when she's actually going to Marcello is men are just sort of like dropping everything to do things for her because she's just so in this magnetic feminine flow. She gets to Marcello's place and she's finally feeling this feminine energy. She's finally willing to open her heart and let herself go to a man and it doesn't go well. So basically you find out that Marcello has found someone else and I mean, he's shut down. He's not completely cold-hearted, but he's definitely not open-hearted like he had been before. And I think it really affects Frances. She starts to feel frustrated. She starts to feel like hurt again because she'd finally let her heart open and she ends up with all this disappointment and she would kind of put all of her emphasis on this guy. And in reality, they were never really going to fully come together anyway because Frances is such a feminine, flowy woman. And in order to be with Marcello, she really did have to step into her masculine energy to be more direct with him, to go to see him. Like, she really did need to step up and be more masculine. And he wasn't really fully embodying the masculine energy that a woman who's as feminine as her was really going to truly be compatible with in the long run. There's so many different areas of this film I could go into because I love this film. So much symbolism. She does connect a lot with with, as far as divine feminine energy with Mother Mary. Um, as she references, she's not Catholic. She doesn't really expect to become Catholic in this experience, but she kind of realizes that she's kind of connecting with Mary as a, she calls her kind of like, like a, like a great aunt or something. And you know, how she kind of felt like she looked over her through the storm. There's actually a photo of Mary on the bed post of the bed that she's purchased from the home. So um, she kind of starts noticing that she sees her everywhere. Italy's obviously very Catholic country. And I actually, I don't talk that much about religion on my channel because that's not really my wheelhouse, but I do think it's a great example of the fact that you don't necessarily need to connect with a certain specific religion in order to be open to energies and the archetypes and the different um, aspects of feminine energy that you can get from different religions. You know, like she, she wasn't Catholic, but she was connecting with Mother Mary. I know a lot of women, myself included, have, have connected more with um, the Mary Magdalene archetype. Um, you know, I personally and a lot of other people who study masculine and feminine energies uh, study a lot of like uh, Hindu gods and goddesses. Um, you know, Christianity it exists in. I mean, there's all kinds of different religions and I think it's a good example. You don't necessarily have to be a member of a certain religion or identify with a whole religion in order to take on a, I mean, if you want to think of it as, as, you know, a god or goddess, or if you want to think of it as just sort of a um, spiritual guide or something like that, it's seeing it that you don't necessarily have to sink into an entire religious belief in order to connect to certain aspects of it. There's also very symbolic, um, there's a storm that happens right when Francis purchases the house. And I think that's actually... I think it's representative of the feminine storm. Uh, the feminine storm is usually this feminine emotional storm. It's very much like dark feminine energy. And I think Frances buying this house was almost like purging a lot of this dark feminine energy that she had been suppressing. She'd been keeping herself very reserved, not really letting go of a lot of her anger and frustration. She purchases this house and then this storm comes in and she's just like releasing all of this anger and frustration she's in fear she's nervous but it's this it's almost like this feminine storm that's coming in to clear the path so that she can be open to new things that's what i read into it also the snake slithering into her bedroom and her getting scared um snakes very often uh i think they're kind of misinterpreted in many many beliefs about feminine energy is the snake the serpent is very much uh, sensual energy. It's very much the energy of um, the sacral chakra, um, which is like the womb space. You know, it, kind of the idea of feminine energy as a snake going up the spine, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of is very often symbolic of connecting your very like grounded sexuality to your spirituality from a higher power. There's a lot of I'm not going to get into all the different ways that snakes are symbolic in feminine energy, but but snake-like energy can very much symbolize tapping into feminine energy and the fact that the snake slithered into her bedroom and she got really scared and then it disappeared. Kind of probably uh, symbolic of the fact that she 
wanted to connect with her sexuality again but she was afraid to and because she was afraid it kind of disappeared on her and it was like ooh, where where is it where is it gonna be where is it gonna come up again it's like this she's got this sort of fear of i mean don't get me wrong i'm not i'm not blaming her i'd be terrified if a snake that big got anywhere near me but like just saying i think in that case it was probably symbolic and then of course there's the ladybug line which is amazing uh where catherine basically uh explains to francis that you know when she was a little girl she used to search and search and search for ladybugs and then she would finally get tired she'd fall asleep in the grass and the next thing she knew ladybugs were crawling all over her and it's it's that's a, a symbolism throughout the the movie where it's sort of like you know once Frances actually relaxes into her feminine energy a man comes up and points out to her that she has a ladybug on her arm and well spoiler alert he ends up being the man for her so it's actually very symbolic of the fact that you know Frances has been like trying to get her life back together so much when she actually just like relaxes and realizes that everything she has is what she needs she attracts in everything that she's ever wanted and and that i think is so evident of feminine energy it's like the the not constantly trying and fighting for things and constantly trying to to do things all the time and it's just sort of like relaxing and letting things get drawn into you and being open to receive them that's feminine energy and I think that that's the moment that Frances really realizes that she's healed that part of her. It's actually Signor Martini at the end who points out to Frances that in reality she got everything she wanted. It didn't look exactly the way that she thought it was going to look, but she got everything that she asked for. She managed to attract everything she wanted, she managed to draw in everything that she wanted just by being herself and by healing. I could go on and on about this movie all day because I really really love this film and I, I love all of the divine feminine energy within it. And I hope that doing these breakdowns, specifically the ones about the different aspects of divine feminine energy, will help you realize that you can be a divine feminine being and you can be a, a writer in Tuscany or you can be a like a huntress queen or you can be a you know Elle Woods from Legally Blonde or you can be any of these things and still be fully embodying your divine feminine energy. It's just all about embracing that part of you and letting that be a part of you. It's not about trying to look a certain way or be a certain way it's just about embodying that aspect of you and letting that come out in the way that's unique to you so this is one of my favorite films and i love the examples of divine feminine energy in this film i love francis's character i love Catherine's character if you've seen this film and eat pray love i'd love to know which one of them you liked better or if you like them both it's fine i mean some people may see them as different i thought they were eerily similar and i like under the tuscan sun way better but i will do a breakdown of eat pray love if people request it if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful please give it a big thumbs up be sure you subscribe to my channel. Uh, I highly recommend after you watch this video, watch this film, even if you've already seen it, see if you can pick up on some of the things that I mentioned. If you have any other film recommendations that you would like me to do breakdowns on, please let me know. Leave a comment in the comment section below. I love to hear from you. I love your suggestions. If you would like to connect to your feminine energy, I have an online course called Feminine Radiance. Details are in the description box below, along with links to all my social media channels. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you join me next time.